Welcome to Woggle Guide. In this guide I'll share with you my five secrets that every new user to Gmail should know. Let's get straight into it. So I'm logged into my Google account and in Gmail. I'm in a completely new Gmail user account I've just created. It still is the original default settings that Gmail uses when a new account is set up. You'll see some of my friends have already sent me emails welcoming me to Gmail. Let's now look at some changes we can quickly make to the Gmail settings to help this inbox work a little harder for us. One of the most common questions we get asked at Woggle Guides is how to unsend an email. This is when an email has been sent by mistake or needs to be edited because it might contain some errors. By default, Gmail allows you to cancel any email you send up to five seconds after you click on the send button, but five seconds isn't very long. In the Gmail settings, you can increase this time window to reduce the chance of sending any emails you might regret. To do that, I'll start by moving my mouse to the top right of Gmail, and I'll click on the gear icon. This opens up Gmail's quick settings options. We want to dive into the detail settings, however. So to do that, I'm going to click on the See All Settings button. The Gmail settings area has a lot of options in it, and it can be a bit bewildering when you first see it. But really, it's just a list of tweaks and changes you can make to Gmail. The important thing to remember is that there isn't very much you can do wrong here, or they can't be undone pretty easily. So don't be afraid to try out changes, because you can quickly change them back if they don't work out for you. So when the detail settings page is first loaded, it was showing the general tab by default. Let's click back into that now. If I look a little way down the page, you'll see one of the options we can change is called Undo Send. This refers to the length of time Gmail will allow you between pressing the send button and then actually sending the email from your account. By default, it is set to only five seconds. If I click on the arrow next to the five, you'll see that you can change the wait time after you press send to a number of options up to 30 seconds. I'd recommend that you change the undo send delay to 30. This means that if I send an email, I'll have up to 30 seconds to change my mind and cancel that email before it actually leaves my Gmail account. Before leaving the settings section, I need to scroll to the very bottom of this page. You'll see that there's a button called Save Changes. And then all I need to do is click on the Save Changes button. Gmail will then reload. If I now click on the Large Compose button, I can quickly write an email. And if I click Send on that, a message appears saying Message Sent. However, you'll see that next to that message is an undo link. Your email has not actually been sent yet. It's still in your Gmail outbox. Gmail will wait for 30 seconds before it sends that email from your account. To cancel that email send, all I need to do is click on the undo option and the original message is restored, still not having been sent. Remember, of course, that once you click the send button, the clock starts ticking. And if you don't click undo before 30 seconds have passed, then that message will have left your email account. So next up, I'll take a look at the display view you can use in Gmail to preview your emails. By default, a preview of your emails is not shown in your Gmail inbox. To look at each email, you need to click into it to read it. And to move to the next email, you can either click on the older arrow in the top right of the email, which moves you through your older emails, or you need to click back into your inbox to choose a particular email. If you use Microsoft Outlook, you'll be familiar with the email preview feature as it allows you to quickly see the content of your emails while still in the inbox. To turn that feature on in Gmail, we need to click back into the settings section by clicking on the gear icon in the top right of the inbox. The quick settings panel is opened, but this time rather than going into the details settings, we'll stay in the quick settings panel. If I scroll to the bottom of that panel, you'll see we have options to add a reading pane. At the moment, it is set to no split, which means a preview is not shown. But I can choose to add a preview that will display emails on the right of the inbox or display emails below the inbox. I prefer my email view on the right of the inbox, so I'll choose that option. And I can just close this panel by clicking on the X at the top right. To preview an email in my inbox, I now just need to click on it and a handy view of that email is shown. Let's now turn to look at the conversation threads that are set up by default in Gmail 
After you've received a number of emails into your inbox, you'll notice that Gmail groups related emails together. These are called conversation threads. You can tell these emails because they'll also show a small number to indicate the number of emails in the thread. All the emails received in a thread, from the oldest to the most recent, are shown under a single email title in your inbox. This can help to add a little bit of clarity on how emails are shown in Gmail, but for a lot of users, including me, particularly those who are more used to Microsoft Outlook, it can be confusing. It's quick to remove this feature, however, and show all the emails individually. To do that, let's click into the gear settings icon in the top right of the inbox. And from the panel that opens, we'll need to go into the details settings section of Gmail. To do that, I'll choose the see all settings option. There's a lot of detail shown in this page. However, the setting we're interested in is on the general page, which is shown by default. I'm going to scroll down until I reach the conversation view section of the page. At present, you can see that the conversation view is switched on. To switch it off, I just need to click on the conversation view off option. The last thing I need to do in this page is scroll to the bottom and choose the save changes button. Gmail then reloads. And if we take a look at our previous conversation thread, you'll see that the emails have now been split out into individual emails, only showing the latest email and previous emails received to that point. Let's now turn to keyboard shortcuts and how they can help speed up how you use Gmail. A keyboard shortcut is a powerful feature that allows you to quickly do something in Gmail without using your mouse. So in Gmail, I can open my latest email by pressing the O key on my keyboard. I can quickly move between these emails by pressing J for older emails and K to see newer emails. And if I want to quickly write a new email, I can open an email compose window by pressing the C key. For reasons that I don't really understand, Gmail doesn't turn on keyboard shortcuts in Gmail by default. You need to actually go in and switch the feature on before you can use shortcuts. Let's do that now. You can turn on shortcuts in the settings section of Gmail. To access that, I'm going to move my mouse to the settings icon on the right of the inbox and click into the see all settings link to open the details settings section. I'll stay in the general section of settings. I'm going to scroll down to the keyboard shortcut section of this page near the bottom. You'll see at present that the keyboard shortcuts are turned off. I just need to click the button below to turn shortcuts on in Gmail. Before you leave this page, don't forget to scroll to the bottom and click on the Save Changes button to commit those changes you've made. Gmail then reloads your inbox. And we can confirm our shortcuts are now working by trying out one of my most used shortcuts. If I press Shift and the question mark key together on the keyboard, a full list of all Gmail shortcuts is shown that you can use to quickly reference any key combinations that you're unsure about. If you're using an Apple Mac, you'll need to press the command and question mark keys together for this shortcut. The last Gmail settings secret I'm going to show you can help you to use Gmail even when you don't have an internet connection. This is great if you're not always connected to the internet and also means you can save your emails onto your computer so you'll have a copy of them. To turn this feature on, we need to visit our settings icon one final time and again we'll dive into the details settings section. This time, however, we're going to visit a new section of settings called Offline. Let's click into that now. At present on this page, there's only one option, to turn Offline Mail on. Let's click in the checkbox to do that. You'll see some more information appears. The first line talks about storage on your computer. This will then allow you to read those emails when you're not connected to the internet. The next line asks you what period of time you want to store emails over. 30 days is the standard. But if I click on the down arrow, I can change that to up to 90 days worth of emails. Below that, you're asked if you want to save any attachments to emails. This might be photos, videos or documents. Remember, if you choose to save these, it will use up your computer storage a lot faster, as they will be much bigger than emails. The last option then talks about your security and privacy. You have two options. Firstly, you can choose to keep your emails stored offline on your computer and not to delete them if you sign out of Google or your Gmail account. The second option will save the emails to your computer every time you log back in. This is more secure, but it will take longer. And as you can see here, it may slow down how Gmail works. I'm going to choose the first option. 
but you should choose the option that's right for you. Once we're happy with all of that, I'm going to click on the Save Changes button to confirm it. A warning message then pops up to say that storing emails offline is not recommended if you share your computer with anyone else, as they may be able to read your emails. If this isn't a problem, click on the large blue OK button. The last step in setting up offline access is to create a bookmark. To do this, I'll click OK to confirm that message. And whilst in my Gmail inbox, I'll use the shortcut Command and D to create a bookmark. If you're working in a Windows laptop, you can press Control and D to get the same result. I'll quickly change the name of this bookmark to Gmail and click Done to confirm it. And you'll see that a new bookmark has now been added to the toolbar. Let's now turn off Wi-Fi on my computer. If I open a new Chrome browser window, a message appears to say that some functionality may be unavailable as we are offline. You can still click into emails and write emails, although these will not actually be sent until you reconnect to the internet. I hope you found this Woggle guide useful and learned something new. If you have, please like or subscribe so that other users can find it too. Thanks so much for watching.